All right. Welcome to uh, this presentation titled Ugandan English. And uh, the presentation is made by Dave Waisingoma, my senior lecturer at Gulu University in Uganda. Uh, our presentation plan is as follows. We'll have a, a brief uh, look at the history of English in Uganda. Then we'll go on to the linguistic ecology of Uganda, because that shapes uh, okay, the background of all these innovations uh, that we have in Ugandan English. Then we'll talk a little bit about the research on Ugandan English, how far we've gone. And then uh, we provide some uh, examples of features of Ugandan English. Uh, which set uh, Ugandan English apart from other varieties of English, uh, especially British English, uh, status and functions of Ugandan English, and then estimates of competence. You know, Ugandan English is an L2 variety, so people have their L1s. So how many people are competent? What are the estimates available? And then we will have a general outlook and concluding remarks. And then eventually we go on to uh, look at the key references, okay, and that uh, I relied on to come up with this presentation. Uh, a, a brief history of English uh, in Uganda. Uh, the whole thing started in 1874 when an explorer known as Sir Henry Morton Stanley okay, came to present day actually Kampala which is the capital city of Uganda. So he met somebody, a king, king of the Buganda kingdom. As I will show you later, Buganda is just a region within Uganda, although the name Uganda definitely comes from uh, the region Buganda. So he was, uh, Sir Henry Morton Stanley was followed by um, uh, Anglican and Catholic missionaries. Uh, respectively, that is on invitation, uh, reportedly on invitation, okay, by uh, the, uh, the king of Buganda kingdom. Then missionaries started schools immediately. Uh, they opened up schools uh, for the locals uh, to, so that they could know how to read and write, okay, and uh, that also came with it, speaking English. And uh, then the number of British increased when uh, the British government declared okay, uh, a protectorate over uh, Buganda in 1894 and also other parts of Uganda okay, uh, followed uh, after that. So there was a need to train uh, local personnel because now the few British people who were around could not take care of all the administration okay, in the whole area under their control. That means uh, two categories of speakers of English emerged. We had the British themselves who were L1 speakers of English and then a few L2 speakers who were locals. And the uh, Ugandans mainly acquired English at school. In fact, that has remained the main locus for the acquisition of English to date. This is because unlike other areas which were colonies, Uganda was a protectorate and uh, which that means that there were almost no settlers. So it was not a settler colony. So there were very few settlers, yes, uh, but uh, there were not many. So the only po point where people could learn English was at school, no informal communication with the settlers uh, uh, or other people who would uh, be around if Uganda had been a full colony. Uh, despite the increased number and the spread of schools all over the country in the years that followed, also, the, the resultant increase, increase in schooling okay, by Ugandans and also the ubiquitous use of English in official settings, as, as we shall see later, um, and the other domains. Uh, English remains the language of a minority. The statistics will 
uh, give us a clear picture later. The linguistic ecology of Uganda. Uganda is said to have 41 indigenous languages. Uh, of course, there is that controversy between what is a language and what is a dialect. Uh, but the linguists have settled for around 41 languages. Otherwise, if we look at other aspects, other dialects which claim to be languages, then uh, there will be more than 41. So the main languages, we have examples here, Luganda, Lusoga, Rutoro. My mother tongue is Rutoro, uh, this one here, uh, Acholi, Lango, Lugara, okay, and other languages. And then we have one endogenous language, and that is Kiswahili, which is a regional language, okay, uh, having come from um, the, the coast, the Indian Ocean, okay, Zanzibar, Tanzania, Kenya, okay, and it is also spoken in Uganda. And then we have one exogenous language, okay, uh, that is English, which is now spoken in a nativized form just the way I speak it, okay. There are also languages, okay, uh, that are spoken by diplomats and uh, business people or taught at school, such as Chinese of recent, especially Chinese, okay, has come on board, but all along we have had French. Personally, I also studied French, okay, and I speak it, okay. And then there is uh, Hindi, German, okay, has also been taught in schools and uh, Arabic and many others. Okay, so the, ne the next item uh, in our presentation is research on Ugandan on Ugan and English. What has been so far? Personally, uh, I got interested in uh, Ugandan English when I looked for this word, to dirty, which is a verb in Ugandan English, which means to dirty or to make dirty in uh, British English. So I looked for the word in all the dictionaries, okay, at my disposal. And uh, at that time, I was in Europe, in Norway, studying, uh, doing my master's. So I had all the dictionaries, including the OED, and I could not find a verb, okay, to Dutton. But I had also read Fisher, 2000, um, 2000, which is the seminal paper on Ugandan English, and also Schmid, 1991, who had talked generally on um, uh, African Englishes with some peculiarities that he uh, put across. So I decided to write a thesis on Ugandan English for my masters. That was the beginning okay, of my work research on Ugandan English. However, for my PhD, I did not, uh, my topic was not Ugandan English, it was a different thing, it was syntax, comparative syntax, English, and my mother tongue. But, but since my interest in Ugandan English, okay, I was still strong, I decided to present a paper, okay, in Australia at the 11th Conference of the International Association of World Englishes. Um, so at the conference, I met Professor Dr. Christian Mayakot, who was also interested in Ugandan English. And then that marked the beginning of our collaboration. Uh, together, we have uh, uh, achieved one important thing, and that is the compilation okay, of the International Corpus of English, Uganda, uh, with the written component already available and the spoken component is being finalized, okay, so that it is made available to the scientific community. We have also written papers which are published, sometimes together, other times, okay, separately. And we have also uh, edited a volume on Ugandan English, which was published by um, John Benjamins in 2016. Uh, and there we had, of course, many uh, 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 chapters that we wrote ourselves, okay, plus other colleagues. And then together we have also acted as consultants to the uh, OED as regards Ugandan English, uh, led by Dr. Danica Salazar, 
not sure whether I pronounced the name well. And uh, we have been able to contribute to the inclusion now of Ugandan English expressions, specifically Ugandan English expressions, not East African, not uh, African, okay, English expressions, but Ugandan English expressions into the OED, uh, whose re uh, revised okay, version will be published in June according to a communication I received from uh, Dr. Salazar. And for us, that is a big, big achievement, okay, uh, because this is a, uh, some kind of recognition, okay, of Ugandan English expressions uh, included, okay, in one of them, in the actual, the most authoritative English dictionary in the world. And that means we have really attained, okay, uh, a milestone in the documentation traje trajectory and codification of Ugandan English. There are also other colleagues who have written on Ugandan English, for example, Saint Puma, 2012, and 2019, that one is a book that was uh, um, published by Peter Lang, and uh, Nassen Ten uh, has also written a couple of articles, okay, and uh, you know, there, there is an article he wrote in 2016 and another one in 2020. Okay, some features of Ugandan English. We will uh, concentrate on uh, three main uh, elements, phonological features, uh, lexical features, and uh, uh, structural features, syntactic features, or morphological features as well, because you know, structure can be any of those. Um, usually, uh, the phonological features okay, are driven by L1 interference, but also sometimes by spelling pronunciation. So we have the mundane feature, okay, I'm referring to it as mundane because it occurs in almost all African Englishes of reducing uh, English vowels to a five vowel system. Okay, Of course, some other African Englishes may have seven and so forth. Okay, So all these words here are pronounced in the same way. They are all pronounced as heart. So I would say my heart is beating. Uh, don't hurt me. I bought a hat. Uh, our grandparents used to live in a hat. That's how we speak here. But something that is peculiar, possibly to Ugandan English, is the class tambe, which is allowed in a syllable. So in Ugandan English, we pronounce these words as climb, plumber, limb, lamb, uh, instead of uh, saying, for example, climb, plumber, limb, or lamb. We also have other variability in individual words, especially driven by uh, sp spelling pronunciation uh, in such a way that uh, this word here is pronounced as avocado, then this is sponge, this is juice, pregnant, weapon, barrio, old. We also have um, a, diph a diphthong, O, which is also driven by spelling pronunciation. Uh, so this word is pronounced as thought, and the other one is uh, thought. Lexical features, there are five main mechanisms involved. Uh, borrowing, uh, calking, semantic ex extension, morphological and phraseological innovations, as, as well as archaism. Borrowing, we have uh, words such as boda boda, motorcycle taxi, matoke, green bananas cooked as food, cheyo, minyo, jobs uh, done by Ugandans or Africans in developed countries, or any extra work done to earn more money, posho, cornmeal, katogo, mixture of bananas and ofo or beans. These are just examples. Kalking, you have, the word whole, for example, which is used disappointingly to show that a person's conduct or action does not match their high or respected position in society. So I extracted an example from um, a newspaper here where somebody said, why would a whole minister buy disputed land? Eat money, which I'm told also occurs in other African Englishes, uh, is a a common expression here, and uh, it means to embezzle, swindle, misuse uh, money, or just use money. 
for example, in another example extracted from a daily uh, newspaper here, uh, Katunguka said others deliberately keep the money to pay it towards uh, the end of the semester and end up eating it with their girlfriends. And this Katunguka is a vice chancellor of um, a university here, a public university in Uganda, to show that uh, Ugandan English is spoken by everybody. Because being a vice chancellor means you must be highly educated. Uh, be lost, okay, which is used especially in the expression you are lost to mean long time no see. And then uh, um, as is used to express surprise, for example, in as you are you are late. Or sometimes you can even somebody can even say as you are lost, combining okay, two Ugandan English expressions uh, in uh, an utterance. Okay. Uh, semantic extension, uh, double decker in Ugandan English means bunk bed. It doesn't mean a, a bus, okay, with two levels or a plane with two levels. Uh, bounce means uh, also, uh, apart from the ordinary meaning, okay, like a, a check bouncing from a, 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 the bank. It also means to turn away somebody or to be turned away. Uh, you are welcome is used as a, a form of greeting uh, to mean welcome. In L1 English, you say welcome when somebody just comes to your office, for example. But here in Uganda, we say you are welcome. Uh, extend means move up. Uh, good, good, good enough means luckily. So somebody say good enough, I had my raincoat because it rained a lot. Uh, good enough, I had my rain, raincoat. All right. Uh, for the morphological and physiological uh, innovations, we have uh, a number of examples here. And to Dutton, which I was talking about at the beginning of this presentation, uh, is here. And break off uh, to mean break up. In Uganda, you don't say I uh, will break up uh, for holiday or for something, OK? Uh, you have to say I will break off. Uh, to malice is to spite, Irish potatoes uh, to mean potatoes, and informally people just say Irish, so I'm going to buy Irish. Uh, turn boy, turn man for an assistant to a driver and pay someone in his or her own currency, that is to have a taste of one's own medicine. Special hire means taxi here, yeah? and actually taxi means something else here. Yeah? Okay, I've not included that in the examples. To avail is to provide or to make available, uh, as in this example that I uh, also gleaned from a newspaper. Archaisms, but of course some of these could be cases of other word formation processes. So thrice for three times, run mad for go mad, ever for always, before, uh, also used, uh, uh, I mean, ever used to, 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 to mean before. So you can say, I've ever seen you around. Do the needful, do what is necessary, abscondment or absconding. That could also be a case of affixation where, of course, innovative, innovatively, uh, from abscond to abscond and the verb abscondment just like to encourage uh, uh, from the verb to encourage, then you have the noun encouragement. And from the verb to abscond, you have the noun abscondment. It could be also a case of a fixation. Uh, to a shame, for to shame, and it could also, also be a case of back formation from the adjective ashamed. Structural features. Uh, we have, of course, the ubiquitous, ubiquitous okay, extended use of the progressive, which is found in, in many other L2 varieties, including Asian Englishes. So somebody will say, I'm not understanding you. Uh, some peculiarities, okay, in relation to Ugandan English, uh, a ditransitive construction such as I poured him some tea is not acceptable. Instead, you have to say, I poured for him some tea. And there is also object omission. For example, indeed, I appreciate. Instead of I appreciate it, or I appreciate that, or I appreciate you, etc. We resemble a lot is a, 
a good uh, construction here uh, instead of we resemble each other a lot. Of course, there's also pluralization of some non-count nouns, such as uh, words such as offers, beddings, gears, where gears uh, means equipment or clothing. Uh, use of the preposition from as a stative locative. So in Ugandan English, we say comfortably, okay, and uh, almost uh, Everybody says this. I usually eat from a restaurant. Uh, for example, I studied in, at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. I would say I studied from the university, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. You know, of course, we also have resumptive pronouns, which can also be referred to as topicalization or left dislocation. Uh, this is strongly attested in Ugandan English, where you have things like uh, an example in a, a sentence like this. Uh, these people, they get things done uh, in Kampala. Not necessarily motivated by uh, this, this NP being uh, given information. Status and functions of Ugandan English. Uh, we are going to look at uh, this from two perspectives in Uganda itself, but also regionally. Of course, Uganda, uh, Ugandan English or English is the sole de facto official language. The jury will have Kiswahili as a co official language, but it is only spoken uh, mainly by the army and a few people along borders, okay, with Kenya, Tanzania, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is the language of parliament, it is the language of the judiciary, it is the sole medium of instruction from grade five up to university. Uh, multinational and big domestic companies also use English, although local languages can also be used depending on the need because there will always be somebody who speaks a given local language or a, a given a local language of wider communication, for example, Uganda, but also uh, sometimes Kiswahili, okay, spoken. It is the official, um, the, the language of official signage although sometimes uh, an indigenous language can be added, may be added, okay, uh, to make things clearer to those to people who do not speak mm. English. For example, on electrical poles and pylons, okay, you will find um, a notice in three languages in Uganda. English at the top, uh, Kiswahili, then Luganda. Uh, it is the lang it is also a, la a language of prestige. Uh, uh, so this has made people speak English only in their homes. Some people, okay, even though they speak the same, okay. For example, if you have a couple, okay. Uh, uh, for example, myself with my wife, okay, we speak the same indigenous language, but you will find uh, people like us speaking English only at home with even our children. I don't do it, I'm just giving an example, okay? Uh, and also, you know, some Ugandan uh, languages are mutually intelligible. So you, there may be a couple, okay, where one person speaks a given language, another one speaks a given, but those languages are mutually in intelligible. So they could as well speak, okay, their languages, because they, will under they would understand each other, but they can opt to speak, okay? English and raise their children, okay, speaking English only. Okay, it is also used in social media and the social events, especially when these involve educated people from different linguistic backgrounds. But usually there is a lot of code mixing. Local music, radio, and television usually have a mix of indigenous languages and English, and sometimes Kiswahili, although um, for uh, in, in relation to music, uh, it is Luganda which dominates at the national level, but there is also music in, uh, at the regional level. So uh, uh, at this level, you, regional languages of wider communication are used. It is also a lingua franca, okay, since there is no national language that can play that role. Although Luganda and uh, in some areas, Kiswahili have similar functions. So uh, I come from Western Uganda, where we speak Bantu languages, but I work uh, in Northern Uganda, where I am currently, where my university is located, uh, where um, 
and nilotic languages are spoken and those languages are mutually unintelligible, but I'm able to communicate to everybody here using primarily English. Um, but also sometimes Kiswahili, if the person I am communicating to does not speak English. Now in the region, Ugandan English has influenced to some extent the way English is spoken in some neighboring countries, especially in Rwanda, due to migration and also the resultant political situations, which, for example, saw uh, former Rwandan refugees in Uganda becoming leaders in Rwanda, a hitherto Francophone country. And at the same time, there are so many Ugandans working in Rwanda. Uh, estimated to be at uh, 30,000 okay, professions and same skilled workers, although uh, these are not uh, official, actually, uh, records, it's just uh, some kind of estimate. In addition, many Rwandans okay, have been studying in Uganda, especially when uh, Rwanda joined the Anglophone world. Right from the primary segment okay, of education through the secondary up to uh, university level. So when they go back to Rwanda, definitely the English they speak okay, is uh, predominantly Ugandan. Although it may have also some flavor from uh, the Rwandan uh, perspective. So there is that, that's a heavy presence of Ugandan English lexicon in English in Rwanda. Uh, for example, I got some examples from uh, the New Times, which is a Rwandan daily in 2019, and I was able to glean uh, the following expressions. Um, we talked about Tartan, you can see it is here, four times, Porsche, okay, more than 100 times, Irish potatoes, more than 100 times, uh, Town boy seven times, avail uh, thirty times, special hire ten times, katogo twenty times, matoke more than a hundred times, keyo uh, fourteen times. Okay, uh, we we are aware that uh, Irish potatoes is also common in Jamaican English. This I got from Globe. Okay, global based, uh, global web based, okay, English. Uh, but we may not attribute uh, the occurrence of this expression to, uh, in, in, in English in Rwanda to uh, Jamaican English, um, because we've seen it occurs, okay, in Ugandan Eng English, okay, as we shall see here, okay, there is some statistic here. Uh, in the neighboring countries such as Kenyan, uh, in the, the, the word the expression okay only occurs five times, according to Globe to Globe, uh, and whereas in the Web UG, which is a corpus of web-based Ugandan English of twelve million words that uh, uh, Maya Code and I okay uh, built, uh, we have Irish potatoes occurring fifty times. So in terms of normalized frequency, uh, web UG uh, has 4.6 uh, uh, per 1 million uh, occurrences per 1 million words, while that of Kenyan English in global will just be 0 0.04 occurrences per 1 million words. So it is more of a Ugandan uh, expression than uh, being a Kenyan expression. Avail, of course, also occurs in other East African varieties of English, that is Kenyan English and Tanzanian English. In a paper that I wrote in 2016, I proved that. Okay, but uh, expressions such as special hire, turn boy, have a very low frequency in Kenyan and Tanzanian English. Uh, well, turn boy occurs three times in Kenyan English and only once in Tanzanian English. Special hire does not occur in Kenyan English and occurs only once in Tanzanian English. So we may not be in a position to say that those expressions found in uh, English in, in Rwanda could have also come from other neighboring countries such as Kenya or Tanzania. Because as we see, they have uh, uh, 
very low incidence in those Englishes. Okay, so uh, theoretically, this leads us to um, state that uh, we are able to see, okay, how an outer circle variety that is, in our case, Ugandan English, may have a transnational role, thereby underscoring what Mayer 2013 uh, delineates in his model known as world system of standard and non-standard Englishes. Estimates of competence, of course, usually this is problematic when it comes to outer circle countries, because usually the statistics are got from um, uh, census reports, and yet census reports have their own weaknesses when it comes to relegating really uh, estimates in terms of linguistic competence. Um, but uh, based on what we have from uh, census reports, we have 15.4 percent of Ugandans. They are. Uh, we have up to 42 million, approximately 42 million uh, people in Uganda. Okay, and 15.4 of them have attained ordinary level of education. Remember, I said the acquisition of English in Uganda is dependent on uh, how far you have gone with your education. Okay, so. Um, Ordinary level of education is up to four years of post-primary education. So such people are believed to have a good level of proficiency. They can communicate in English, although they fall short of the international corpus of the English threshold of admission to the acrolectal category, which is completion of 13 years of English education. Completing all level means you have spent 11 years, okay? Uh, whereas, uh, 13 years requires, okay, uh, having completed advanced level. So based on uh, the ICE criterion, who, they are only 7.3% of Ugandans okay, who have attained a level uh, who can be said now to be acrolecto speakers of English. But also there are differences, okay, based on uh, uh, the dichotomy urban versus uh, rural areas. Okay, so in uh, urban areas and especially private schools, uh, English is taught right from kindergarten and is used as the medium of instruction right from kindergarten up to uh, the end of the primary cycle. And by the time a pupil uh, completes uh, the primary cycle, they are already well, well conversant with English and proficient okay, in it. Outlook and concluding remarks. We expect an increased number okay, of speakers of Ugandan English. Why? Due to increased level of schooling. So for example, in the census that was carried in 2002, there were only 4% of Ugandans who had completed uh, a advanced level. But in 2014, uh, there was an increase by 3.3%, uh, which made now uh, uh, us have 7.3% uh, of Ugandans having attained okay, a level. So there are currently 7.3 acrolyto speakers of English in Uganda. There is a, because also the increased uh, the increased number of speakers will also be due to uh, increased use of social media. And now, due to increased use of the internet, social media, Hollywood, Nollywood, and Bollywood movies via satellite TV, as well as migration, there will be increased interactions across Englishes, where varieties such as American English or Nigerian English or Indian English okay, will continue to impact on how Ugandans speak English. As far as American English is concerned, uh, this is already evident. Uh, for example, a search uh, for some American English items in WebUG shows the following. You see that on the weekend, which is an American English expression, occurs 14 times, uh, versus at the weekend, which is British English, which occurs 
36 times. Uh, but when it comes to overhead as a noun, it occurs 64 times as an American English expression, occurring 64 times in Ugandan English, compared to overheads, which is a British English expression occurring uh, 13 times. And upscale occurs 41 times as a, a American English expression, the British English equivalent up market occurs only 25 times. So you can see uh, that they, they, they are already expressions, okay, from um, American English that are even more popular uh, than uh, British English expressions. Now, some features of Ugandan English are so entrenched that no stigma is associated with them by anyone, including Ugandans who erroneously claim to speak British English. Many Ugandans still think that they speak British English. It is as the linguists who know that they don't speak British English. But they, some think they speak British English. But there are also areas where they know they speak actually Ugandan English, as we shall see uh, soon. So for example, the use of from for stative, uh, as a stative locative, uh, for example, uh, I, in a sentence like I studied from uh, uh, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, that is not stigmatized by anybody here in Uganda. Okay. Uh, but again, when it comes to pronunciation, Ugandans don't like fellow Ugandans who try to pronounce like the British or Americans. They call that uh, forging an accent. So they want you to pronounce English words like a Ugandan. This is the perspective where they are really conscious that they cannot pronounce okay, English as the, the British do or the Americans do. There are also some British or American English forms which are instead stigmatized in Uganda. So if one uses them, they would be seen as speaking broken English. So you cannot say we are going to break up, okay, for holiday here in Uganda. Even if you are highly educated, okay, as long as you are Ugandan and you say, even if you are a British person or an American, if you say that here, Ugandans will say, ah, we thought these people were good speakers of English. They are already making mistake. Then they will just think that you have a problem with the English language, even though it is your mother tongue. Um, to pour someone a drink, um, the Ugandans would want you to say to pour okay uh, for someone a drink okay uh, of course uh, canonically in a, in L1 English this version should be to pour a drink for someone whereas to pour for someone a drink can be used under certain pragmatic uh, situations okay uh, so what does that tell us uh, theoretically it tells us that um, Ugandan English has started showing some aspects of endonormative stabilization in the sense of Schneider's uh, 2007 model of the trajectorial development of postcolonial Englishes, um, which means uh, Ugandan English has uh, started showing okay, uh, features that allow it to enter phase four because there are five phases in total, foundation, exonormative exo stabilization, nativization, and the normative stabilization and differentiation. So slowly Ugandan English is, mo is moving away from nativization uh, to endonormative stabilization. Now the references, uh, these ones, this is the, the first part, main references. There could be also others which are not uh, given here, but these are the main ones. And uh, the second page of the references uh, is here. Um, you can uh, look through and see, okay which ones you are conversant with or which ones you are not, then you can still explore whatever is contained there. Thank you.